This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Factor, the only food source that is easier than its URL. Head on over to go.factor75.com slash rogue120, but you're not done. Make sure to use promo code rogue120 at checkout, and then you'll save 120 bucks. We are here with Mike Berzowski nope. from- nope. Mike Berzowski. <laughs> oh, I did it, I did it. First shot! I love it! I love it. But I blame you two. <laughs> one <laughs> shot, one kill. <laughs> right out of the gates. That's so warm. <laughs> All right, we are here with Alex Berezowski from My Cigar Pack. Yes, sir. You're gonna teach us not to be chooches? <laughs> I remember that episode. That was great. And, right. and don't be a chooch. Wait, 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 maybe this, this might be the most important word we're I've, about to learn. I've heard this before. I think Rubio actually called me this one time. But Yeah, Chooch is the guy that walks in, essentially does everything wrong, while under the guise of pretending he's an expert. Skip and Mike I mean, tried. They yeah, didn't. First of all, futile gesture. I mean, I appreciate the enthusiasm and all that, but we will always be Chooches, but... We want to figure out the difference between what? Uh, uh, low end, medium end, high end cigars? Yeah, well in this case, each one has a special background to it. So we're not really gonna try anything that's like low tier or uh, low price. These are all pretty expensive cigars. It's interesting because you usually try to differentiate cheap and expensive cigars. We are differentiating three expensive cigars. So like if you're at a club, these three cigars are being smoked. One is being smoked by Elon Musk. The other is Hugh Hefner. <laughs> the other is Batman. Correct. Uh, <laughs> okay, so they're all- That's pretty <laughs> accurate. One of them explodes. <laughs> one of them is laced with Viagra. And the other one makes you an hole. <laughs> I'll let you pick which one is which. <laughs> Lots to unpack there. Hey. I'm gonna give you a quick background on each and then I'll give you each one uh, a cigar for you to smoke and then we're gonna guess the price. Actually, the guy that blended this cigar has a reverence when he uh, when he gives you the cigar. So when you're fortunate enough to receive a cigar from the blender of the cigar, which is uh, Eladio Diaz, who now has his own factory, he will make a sort of a reverence handing you the cigar. It's very interesting. Like a katana. Sorry. Yeah. The Davidoff uh, Royal Release, Royal R, is uh, one of the brand's most coveted blends. It was released a few years ago, and it was blended in a process, of an ongoing process of 10 years. This cigar was particularly devised or created with a specific subsoil and soil in mind to create certain flavors. It is uh, very coveted in the industry, and it's, it is now ceased in production, so you can only find the aftermarket or whatever's left. What part of the world does this come from? The Dominican Republic. Okay, yeah. I know lots of good cigars come from there, but also like once the production run ends, do, do they decay over time? Or if they're in a good humidor, will they last for a very long time? That's a great question. Uh, this actually can show signs of aging with this golden hue in the cellophane. The cellophane is essentially the plastic covering that protects the cigar from any scratches and dents. And you can see the plastic kind of yellowing and weathering. Yes. It happened to one of my stormtroopers. Full action figure, it gets all yellow. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that means it's aging well. Yeah. Well, if you see a yellowing after you've had a cigar for very little time in your humidor, that is a direct indication that there is excess of humidity in the cigar, but if it does not do it immediately and it shows throughout time and the hue is shown with the passing of the years, it means that the oils have essentially worn down a little bit, but if you touch it and the cigar is not, it doesn't have any bland spots, does it, does it remind you a little bit of something? Skip, he was telling you about the bland spots. Oh yeah. Yo, the bland yeah. spots. I, I remember it like yeah. it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what did we say? and you're feeling it to see if there's any soft spots. You don't want to find any soft spots because those soft spots will not burn evenly and it'll create a bad experience. Old Skip, with all of that knowledge, continue, sir. So that gold hue can tell you that it's a pretty old cigar. If the cigar is kept properly and in appropriate humidity and temperature, whether it's in your personal humidor or in the shop that initially bought that cigar to sell, it'll smoke properly. Yes, cigars with time lose a little bit of oils. You can see this here, that's the oils in the wrapper, but there are naturally occurring processes within the blend, the tobaccos that are mingling inside, with time, usually get better. 
That is not a mark of quality, like how long it lasts, but it is determined largely by the ingredients. Correct. It is subjective to the ingredients. There could be really good blends that, you know, after five years have lost so much mm -hmm. that you're not getting the nuances and flavors that that blend was designed to give you. But then there are other blends that could be either uh, just appropriately flavored or even harsh flavored. And then with the passing of time, they mellow down and they're like completely different. I mean, I've smoked 20, 30 year old cigars that in most of the occasions have lost so much that you're essentially just tasting aged and old tobacco. But there are other occasions where I've smoked 20 year old cigars that are actually pretty decent. So this one, do we get to know how old it is? Well, this is probably two or three years old. I'm okay. probably not more than that. But it's a Davidoff, okay. It is a Davidoff. All right. So I will give you, Brian, Oof. the Davidoff. What else we got? We got the LFD and Illusion Bull. This was the number one cigar of the year by Cigar Aficionado in 2016. So six years later, it is still one of the most coveted previous number one cigars of the year. Uh, what you typically see in most number one cigar of the years, and especially in the most impactful one, which is the Cigar Aficionado's uh, number one cigar of the year, or top 25 cigar of the year. They do an annual list, and based on the cigar's performance, that cigar has more demand or, or fanatism or uh, uniqueness in the market. So this cigar has been sold out and on back order for the last six years. You cannot produce enough for the market's demand. Previous number ones or number twos in the past have created a really good ripple effect in the market for the first couple of years, but then there's usually supply for the demand and you don't feel that this impact is as strong as this cigar has clearly demonstrated in the market. So it's very interesting. It's made by Lito Gomez and Tony Gomez from La Florida Dominicana in the Dominican Republic as well. Uh, we've got another Dominican cigar and uh, it's a very special cigar. It's one of the first ones at the time in a while that uh, got the number one with uh, such a unique Vitola. This is a Parejo with the Figurado shape. It's coming back. There's, there's, there's coming sparks. Back. Yep, yep, yep. There's yep. sparks. To be honest, I heard award winner and uh, all yeah. of a sudden I was like, <laughs> probably valuable. That's probably valuable. There you go. It's uh, it's an indication of where uh, you can potentially price it. I can give you a hint. I'm not going to tell you the number, but I will tell you that this cigar has increased uh, in price in the shops even before the lack of supply and, and, and raw material the last couple of years. So this cigar has been selling a lot more. It's, it's going for a lot more in the uh, the secondary market and the, the resale market, and shops are selling it essentially at the, whatever price they want. Uh, just because it's so demanded. Do we get a similar hint about how old is this one? Yeah, it was released in 2016. I don't believe, especially because it's in cellophane, this cigar came without a cellophane in the box. This cigar was then released in bundles just to replace all the empty boxes that the shops had. And they were being cautious because this is a very precious and expensive and demanded cigar. So they placed a cellophane on it, which means this is probably at least an 18 or 19, 2018, 2019 production. So Jason, I will Sorry, I will reverend this. Oh, look at that. A reverence. Uh, you got to tell us about Cyberpunk over here. Uh, Cyberpunk. This is really interesting. I just got this cigar. This is one of one right here because it is not yet in America to be released, which will be released next month, uh, July. Vlada, which is one of the main components of Kazdagli cigars, alongside Jeremy Kazdagli, the owner of the brand, sent me the cigar. He keeps saying words and they get weirder and weirder. Oh, no. Walk me through this. Some Morse code going on over well, there. Well, uh, I can tell you a little bit about that, and you just hit it right. That translates to the Kraken. <laughs> Somebody's going to waste an hour now <laughs> because you said that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, it's actually a little bit more profound than that. Backstory on this is that Alex Gazdagli, Jeremy's grandfather, the owner of the brand, who only, by the way, discovered this a few years back uh, when he found a bunch of uh, letters and uh, remnants from the war. Alex was uh, a prisoner of war, and the only thing that uh, POWs could receive were uh, crates and boxes from the Red Cross. In them, he would receive needles, and uh, through the MI9, he would receive uh, secret components that would transform into things that could help people escape, so he was actually 
cooperating with the MI9. He knitted messages for rebellious and, and planning, plotting messages through Morse code. And there was a famous uh, knit that he did, that he knitted, uh, that said, F you Hitler, and that was being passed along in the cells and nobody, no, no German understood that it was saying F you Hitler. Uh, it's a very popular story if everybody wants to research Alex Kazdagli. It's, it's called the, the Cypher 3311 and that's his number as a, as a POW number. Partial proceeds of this cigar are gonna go to the Red Cross just because of how important the Red Cross was for the aid in escaping of a lot of these prisoners. He was held captive for four years. 16,000 cigars will be produced and uh, to my understanding, this will be it. It is made in Costa Rica, and it has been uh, under development for the last three to four years. Okay, okay, okay. Look, there's a bunch of different vectors happening right now, because if there's one thing we learned from our friends over at the Whiskey Tribe, is that the price does not necessarily reflect the quality of the experience. Correct. It reflects the scarcity of the experience. We have scarcity, we have flavor, we have prestige, we have story. Yes. And we have to guess which of them ends up at what, around $25, around 50 bucks, around 75? Correct. Okay. Is right. that a good range? That is a great range. Oh, the band came off. That's crazy. What? The band came off. Uh, That's insane. Is that bad? Is he cursed? Well, it, he could be. Oh. It smells good. Well, there you go. You got the spy cigar. That's cool. We learned that there are different types of uh, cuts you could do. I'm going to do a very tiny cut because I want a little baby puff. Oh, wow. It smells like a cigar. It's a double box press. Usually a box press is only pressed in a, in a, in a square once. But double box press means that once the process is done, you flip the cigar and do it once again on the side. It's like a perfect square. Perfect I'm not going to say you're like trying to convince us that that's the $75 one or nothing. <laughs> but it looks like maybe with those sharp edges, you could like saw through bars or something like that. I mean, it if looks you were... awesome. Don't I think you're trying to tell something. For sure. This is amazing. There we go. All right. Like the brass knuckle Yeah, this cutter. is great for fighting. All right. Right out of the gate. Knowing that this is two or three years old, and I wouldn't have valued the fact that it's kind of um, yellowed on the outside. Uh, I think you used a nice euphemism of like golden or something. Yep. Um, uh, I would not have expected this to have been as smooth as it is right out of the gates. That's interesting because there's, there's various uh, first impressions that you get from a cigar. I don't typically take a cold draw unless I'm tr really trying to get into the blend. If I do get a little cold draw, it's very briefly right before I light it up. But there's various ways that spice can be represented uh, and smoothness, right? So harshness, sweetness, bitterness, sourness, like what you usually get on your lips or, or, or when you have your cigar on, on your mouth for the first time is like the first impression is from the wrapper. The, the cigar hasn't really presented any particular consistency just because it, it's just ignited, right? So. That was the most words anyone has used to call me a chooch. I, 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 I hear you loud and clear. I was tasting the wrapper, not the leaf. Fine. Which, which is, it's, it's the first impression, right? So you, you salivate a little bit, your lips touch it, you kind of naturally smack your lips, and then you get a note. The fact that you said it was smooth, it probably means because the, the, the wrapper is neutral in that sense. It's not too spicy, it's not too sweet, which is, it's a good sign if you want to focus on how the blend performs what versus about you, the... Murphy? You want to try to sound smart? Yeah, I'm getting uh, notes of old Andalusia. Makes me uh, <laughs> think of uh, when I saw the bullfighting as a child, and the matadors dancing around, flashing their red capes. It's very evocative of uh, Ferdinand, I guess. I swear to God, like I looked around to see if there was a teleprompter somewhere. <laughs> but uh, is, is it smooth? No, it says it's bitter. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, sorry, I, miss, I misread it. Um, you know, it's got, uh, I, I think so, but it's got a little bit of a bite to it, which is what I like in my cigars. I like to know that I'm smoking I a cigar. I... So describe to me what you're getting. Really, really mellow, really smooth, real easy. Uh, to be honest, this is one that I would probably select for myself. Uh, I might even pick a smaller one. One of the best decisions I ever made was giving myself permission to never finish. A cigar, yeah. Uh, uh, but this th this one is easy. What what about that one? Uh, same. And also, I'm noticing that with a lot of cigars, especially 
maybe it's just cheaper ones in my experience, which is limited. This one doesn't have much of an aftertaste because a lot of times I smoke a cigar and I'm just tasting it yep. for hours. And that's not always a bad thing, but sometimes it is. And with this one, I'm not getting a lot of that really strong aftertaste in the back of my throat. I'm not gonna lie, when I wake up in the morning and I taste cigar on my own breath, I go, because <laughs> 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 usually it was an interesting night before. Well, that's actually pretty on point. Lower quality tobaccos tend to produce that aftertaste that is pretty harsh um, right after and the day after. It's uh, usually not the nicest morning. There are some certain tobaccos, like I can pinpoint you like USA, Pennsylvania, or lower from the Dominican Republic, that have like these, these nuances that are very punctual and, and harsh and, and, and like, it's like a weird bitterness that provides that aftertaste that is just very dominant in your mouth and just usually not that nice. I particularly say that these are great tobaccos to blend in small quantities into, into your cigar because they give them punches and kicks and, and, and spices and makes it interesting, right? But if you use too much, it can give you that harshness. I am aftertaste. ready to lock my vote in. Oh, wow. We have one that had an extraordinary story. We had one that had an award behind it. We had a, another that was old. I think straight across the board, I have the $25 one. I think that yours is going for about $50. And I think that yours is, yes, there are a lot of them at 16,000 units or whatever, but that is a wonderfully crafted story that I think is gonna sell very well. It's got a ritual to opening. That, I think, is the $75 one. I agree. Also, it came in a box. <laughs> so your final guess is the same. That is 25, yes. 50, we 75. Are as of one. So the real prices are all incorrect. What? Wait, wait, we got it all right? <laughs> you got, got it all wrong. We got them all wrong. <laughs> that's not the 25, that's not the 50, that's not the 75. That's what I would have guessed as well. Well, based on the looks and based on the stories, I think you guys guessed very appropriately, especially with this packaging. Number one is this cigar was released in 2016 at $16. It has had a price increase to about $19, and I will not find anywhere unless there's one or two online retailers that sell it under $25. LFD Andalusian Bull is the $25 uh, cigar in this case. This so is great. In, in this case, how much, how much longer do we have before the age starts to be a factor on whether or not you would pay $25 for it? Based on the flavor, based on the demand, based on the hype that this cigar has already built, there's people paying $30 for it. It doesn't matter if it's aged five, 10 years. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are original boxes from the first batch in 2016 when this cigar won number one cigar of the year that are probably going for, you know, $400, $500, which would equate to like $40, $50 a stick for a, per cigar. But in this case, the demand is already so high, the award backs up that uh, that good quality that the cigar has. So it justifies people paying 25, 30, 35 for the cigar. So, now that cigar, yeah, that cigar is, it's not just 75, it's actually 85 MSRP. What? Um, I've, I've seen it in many places go for a lot more, but it's 85 MSRP when it released. And wow. you will find that cigar. I mean, Davidoff has uh, quite a few cigars. Their base lines usually go for 20, 25, 30 bucks. Their specialty lines, small batch limited releases go for 40, 50, things like that. This wasn't really meant to be a limited release. They just grew the blend based on what they wanted it, and right. they got the most they could out of it until they said, I can't replicate this. Right. So that's why, you know, you'll find this cigar go for, in the resale value, in the resale market, or, or, or in the shops, go for a lot more than the $85 I mean, I, I, MSRP. Don't get me wrong, it is a fine smoke, but I could tell that scarcity is what matters. Like, there Correct. are puzzle boxes on our website that it's like, we'll never be able to get that type of wood again, and that is gonna have to be retired, yep. and those are gonna get harder to get your hands on. Now, these prices, are they only good for the collectors, the for the, the aficionados, or uh, is that something that makes sense to your chooches and your pedestrian smokers? There's a branding, marketing, and commercial aspect that says, Every cigar brand needs to have their Trojan horse, their really expensive cigar. In this case, Kaz Dagley 
is just releasing a $50 cigar. They do have $20, $25 cigar released. I don't know that they have a Trojan horse, a really expensive cigar. There are people that simply want this more, most expensive cigar that you have. Mm -hmm. Now there are other, to the other side of the story, to the, in the other perspective, there are consumers that like the story, they're aficionados, even though their average uh, smoke is a nine to twelve dollar cigar, they will buy one or two fifty dollar cigars just to see if that story that's been built up to satisfy the quality of the cigar um, well, is worth it to, to the experience. Quite true, literally, aficionado. you want to save something for a special occasion, Correct. You know, whatever that is. As I believe I heard one of our friends at the Whiskey Tribe, Daniel, say, uh, it's not necessarily what is the best whiskey, it's just the one you like to drink. That is correct. Don't think you can only appreciate the, the $85 cigars or what have you. If you I find mean, what you like, smoke it. Yep. Yeah, and plus also, let's just admit I won because I have the most expensive <laughs> cigars. So yeah. Alex, where can we find more of your stuff? MyCigarPack.com and CigarYard.com. Most importantly, if you have access to your local tobacconist, support your local tobacconist because that is very important to keep this industry alive. Tell them the winner sent you. <laughs> I want that on a shirt with that you, sounds, with a cigar. The Tell winner, them the winner sent you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 70s cognac commercial. And tell them the winner sent you. You know, in a perfect world, I'd be able to go to any grocery store and find smart, fresh foods that I could select myself. Perfect for keto, calorie smart, for vegan, vegetarian, you name it, any kind of meal. And in that perfect world, I would come home and I would chop up all the ingredients, I would cook them exactly perfectly, and I know what you're saying. Aha, that exists with HelloFresh. Yes, HelloFresh is great, but in a more perfect world, I don't even have to do the cooking. I leave the cooking to the professionals so I get all of the benefits. With Factor, there's no prep and no mess. They cut out the stressful meal planning and extensive prepping so meals come together in minutes. Ain't no guesswork on what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes. Fresh, healthy foods catering to your diet, delivered to your doorstep. Never frozen. We're talking about our friends over at Factor. Head on over to GoFactor75.com slash Rogue120. That's right, it's so easy, I'll say it twice. Go.Factor75.com slash Mon... Nope. Go dot... Uh, go to this... Make... Make sure to use the promo code Rogue120 at checkout. Is it Monorogue? You'll save $120 when you sign up for the service that makes it easy to get a healthy diet you love. It's super easy. You're just gonna, you, you know, egg, 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 egg. okay, I'll share. How is it? Oh, it's real good. I'll bet you can't say the URL. I can put it on the screen though. No, no, no. Just say it, say it. John, can you say it? Uh, uh, it's very rude for me to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> Go.factor75.com slash rogue120. Use promo code Rome. God. God. Say it, Pro say it. Uh, go. What is the, is it gofactor.com? Go dot <laughs> Oh, go dot, there's a dot. Go dot factor dot seven. Com Guys, it rolls off the top 20. Hold on, is there a dot after factor before 75? It's go dot factor 75.com slash rogue 120. And use promo code rogue 120 to get $125, $120. No. <laughs> See, you're so close, you're so close. Modern Rogue is supported in part by viewers like you at patreon.com slash modern rogue. In the description, you can find all of our credits and additional ways to support the show. You've been smoking a couple of cigars a day for a long time now. How do you not look like a Us. lich? How, how oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, as I stepped on your line. No, I no, did. no. <laughs> yeah. If it plays. It does. Uh, well, I think... Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, he does look like a lich. Where is your phylactery? <laughs>